Let me tell you a story, a tale I once heard. Welcome, you are listening to Ladies Who Genre, a podcast book club for ladies and not ladies who like to genre now and then. I'm your host, Morgan. And I'm your other host, Noelle. Quick spoiler warning, this is not going to be a spoiler-free podcast, so if you've not read this episode's book, or to be honest, any of the entire series for this book, and are a little bit sensitive to spoilers, you might want to pause on this real quick and go read it and then come back after you're finished. Trigger warning, uh, in case you're the kind of person who needs that, there are some sexual themes in this book and quite a bit of gore. This week, we're discussing Stormfront by Jim Butcher, the first book of the popular Dresden Files series. Just so everyone knows, this is actually one of my favorite book series of all time. I have reread this book series now 10 times. I can't, I don't think I've ever read any book 10 times over, not even the first Harry Potter. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I've easily yeah. toasted Harry Potter like at least 25 times. I read it. I read the whole series at least once a year, if not more. And it's been out for 20 years. I love new books. I just... <laughs> I read them as a comfort thing. So I read a bunch of new books and they make me slightly uncomfortable and like uh, it's not like comforting or if like if I'm traveling by myself or, you know, I'm out doing something that I find uncomfortable or if I'm sewing because if I when I sew, I really want to sort of be able to check out if I need to. Like, you know how you watch old movies and stuff? Because yeah, no, make- totally. Yeah, they there. It's just like familiar background noise and stuff. So, but yeah, um, I I particularly like James Marster's voice. So, I'm into having him read me fifteen to say twenty three books. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> uh, I do have a fun piece of uh, crappy trivia for you about this book. It's called Stormfront, by the way, and. It's also the name of a white supremacy group. So if you're out there Googling Uh the words Stormfront, (laughs) be careful. Don't be confused. Yeah. We're not, it's not about the jerks. It's the book about wizards. Yeah. And it's, that's really, really unfortunate given the current climate out there. Like, oi, what a time to be called Stormfront. (laughs) I hate it. I hate when things that I don't want to be associated with other things for some reason become associated. Not even associated, just they use the same name. Right. It's dumb. it's dumb. Anyway, how's your week been? It's been fairly good. Today I am extremely full of lasagna and s'mores. We decided Yum. to go ahead and set a Wait fire a in the backyard. What? Hold up. You what? had Rice Krispies earlier I did. today. I did. Yes. And now you're telling me you also have s'mores? I did. Oh my God. Gluttonous. Can I come over? <laughs> I'll, ta- I'll be there in what does it take me? Two days to get there? I gotta stop. You like a, you know, 15 hour drive. You You can do it. I could just power right through that. Yeah, I mean, I've done great. it once before. <laughs> I don't even remember how my week has gone. I just, I can't remember past yesterday. But today I feel great. I'm very full and it's delicious. Oh, excellent. My week has been very disjointed, like very, it's not been unproductive, but it's been very unfocused. I did spend two days playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. and mm, I do approve. Now I'm just hearing the the sound of the birds and stuff that are in that game just constantly playing in my head and like the random town music or like when you <laughs> when you get to the stable there's a certain music you can hear and tells you like oh god there's a stable there I can oh. rest. <laughs> do you do you ever especially after you've been playing a game like really intensely for you know a few days or a few weeks do you ever get dreams about like the mechanics of oh, yeah. the game or like mixing yeah. real life plus the mechanics in some way or oh Absolutely. my god <laughs> I have really vivid dreams about like whatever I'm thinking about usually. Although I think I was telling you I had a, a weird dream where Zach Pinsent was my cousin and we were at a weird party last night. And the night before I dreamed that I was tattooing myself, but with needle and thread. So they were like erasable because you could seam ripper them out. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. And I was like, that's so weird. Like when I woke up, but um, yeah, I have but dreams. I'm kind of into it. Yeah. I've had dreams about like being in Hyrule, like running around and <laughs> avoiding the ancient technology that's trying to kill you constantly. I also, I have dreamed like sort of matrix style in HTML before, like wow. where I'm just looking at HTML code and I can yeah. tell what's going on. And that's a really weird dream to have. You wake up and you're just like, what? <laughs> yeah. I feel like when I have video game dreams, it's not about the world. It's not about the story. It's it's something about the mechanics Mm. of what I was doing or how you move in the game or how you interact with the world in the game that somehow that's the bit that seems to really just kind of like invade my my dreamscape. I had a dream that I was running around Hyrule once and I was out in the like main plains area where 
I don't ever go like I I actively avoid that area because it's full of like the bad guys that I don't know how to kill. And so but I I thought it was really funny when I was out there because when I ran, it sounded like when Link's running because I I don't (laughs) ride the horse. I just run around mostly Mm. and like fast travel through. He makes this very like distinct noise when he runs. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I sound just like Link. Oh, goodness. Well, now that I'm very full, I am also having a drink just to top that off and contribute to the extreme full feeling here. Mm. I'm having a blue moon, which I know is maybe not the most exciting of of drinks out there, but there's something very like magical about the concept of a blue moon. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. just, it's the same thing that we do with blood moon and things like it just it's, it seems like it's magical. Although I I think that pairs better with the second book in the series, which is about werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing the first book. It's called F- Fool Moon, I think. F O O L Moon. Uh, I'm drinking a Kentucky Bourbon Martini to pair with this one. Oh, I felt fancy. very Kentucky, Kentucky Bourbon ish because of Harry Dresden, and I felt very Martini ish because of Marcone. Oh, and, okay. And Chicago, like the like one of the things that like nobody ever talks about about this book is like is like Chicago is a character in this book for sure. Yeah, I agree. There's something about the identity of the place being very much a part of the story. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the opening line of this book is, "I heard the mailman approach my office door half an hour earlier than usual. He didn't sound right." It's a very mild beginning. I'm going to say to this book. It makes sense, say, though. <laughs> I would say that Harry is a generally mild man until he's not. Yeah. And once you've listened to like the rest of this chapter, this opening chapter to this opening book of an entire series, it's very much just there to lay the groundwork of he's a wizard PI working in Chicago and he's the only one around. And clearly this is a sort of muggle world where people are like, hmm. I, I don't know about that. I don't believe. <laughs> you know, yeah, this is like a nonsense. It's a noir gumshoe novel that is narrated from the perspective of a wizard who no one believes is a wizard. Fun fact about that. This book was actually written on a bet. And I it's sometimes reported that it was just a challenge and sometimes a bet. I went to Dragon Con and I saw the author talk and he said it was a bet. So I'm going with a bet. Uh, he got told by his teacher to write novels more like the Anita Blake series, uh, which is written by Laurel uh, K. Laurel, Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. And he is quoted as saying, when I finally got tired of arguing with her and decided to write a novel as if as if it were some kind of formulaic genre written drone, just to prove to her how awful it would be, I wrote the first book of the Dresden Files. Like he got he was he was trying to write high fantasy basically and they kept coming out as garbage and so he was talking to his mentors and they were like just write one that's like Anita Blake and he was like nah it'll be even worse it'll be garbage and he wrote it and then it got published <laughs> I, I do enjoy the author I haven't actually read the Anita Blake series but I did check out uh, the Meredith Gentry yeah I don't I don't like Anita Blake but I think I don't like the reader oh that's fair there's a I I'm very uh, susceptible to readers that's why um james marsters does it for me it's very interesting the entire genre of urban fantasy because it's it's such an interesting way to start your story because the reader immediately already has a familiarity with the setting you know what modern day cities or towns or whatever look like so you instantly know what this looks like even if you've never been to chicago you you know the setting yeah, absolutely. I mean, for for anybody out there who doesn't know what urban fantasy means, it's it doesn't even have to be necessarily in a city, although it usually is. It's just any kind of um, novel with like vampires, werewolves, mages, that sort of thing that is set in modern day world. Like yeah, like you like you could magic. walk out the door and encounter urban fantasy. Yeah, tossing some some magic in the mundane kind of thing. It's just it's neat. It's neat because you don't have to spend all that time world building to explain where this place is and what kingdoms are there and things like you, you can just jump on in because we already know we got it we understand <laughs> so that's kind of the the leg up that urban fantasy has and it does he totally kind of jumps on in there in this book starting to explain that he's a wizard and he's the only one in the phone book and the mailman's kind of making fun of him and he is investigating a number of crimes that are popping up very strange murders 
question mark yep yep they're totally murders like we find out well they're he's also uh, investigating a, a missing person yes so but he's got kind of a couple different things all going on through that we meet a bunch of other main characters we see the lieutenant karen murphy who's in the special investigations unit for chicago we see uh marcone kind of like the almost mob boss he is the mob boss he's also like the owner of the the mayor and the senators and stuff like he's not just a mob boss he's like the mob boss's mob boss yeah he's the fanciest of mob bosses yeah we also see a few kind of fun characters that live with <laughs> with dresden he has a talking skull bob which it's so funny listening to this book because i could i kind of forgotten about bob whoa but, bob's like my favorite no he's fantastic i love me some bob but in my subconscious i clearly like still kind of remembered because i think about a year ago i had a D game which had a talking skull in it oh and yeah. uh which is a thing i don't know D, &D man <laughs> it's wild <laughs> and uh for some reason i my character decided that she wanted to keep this skull it was like floating and so she tied it on a string like a balloon <laughs> and uh, took That's it with awesome. her. And it did nothing but spew insults. That's all this character, this NPC character did. And she named That's not it... very far from Bob. No, it's not. And <sighs> uh, the character named her Bob. And I don't think I consciously did that as a Dresden reference. Because it's oh, been a yeah. while since this, this series hasn't had a new book in, in a hot minute. Yeah. But I think it must have been in the back of my head. <laughs> I have... Uh eight uh sorry seven koi in my pond and they're all named bob interestingly enough that is fabulous i'm a big fan even the girl one yeah nice. there's more than one girl and they're all named bob but they have like <laughs> goldie bob or ghost bob or black bob or split fin bob or whatever mm, uh like bob is a, a spirit of intellect and he has been helping wizards for arguably thousands of years to harness their craft and he lives inside of a skull and he can't leave the skull without the permission of the person who's his say master i guess yeah sure owner yeah. whatever whatever the terminology is and so he's he's there with he's like a internet for wizards basically like he he has all the knowledge and it's easily accessible although he's always trying to get out of the skull because he's a giant perv and he just wants to go like sit in women's bathrooms and like watch them pee i, guess. I don't know whatever uh, or something anyway. Who knows? he does not explain <laughs> he's what he's up to yeah but he's just being a giant perv the rest of the time so he he won't give harry the knowledge without harry ponying up some some offerings to him by letting him out he also sits there reading romance novels so i kind of feel like He's the magical version of Alexa. If Alexa was just a little bit smarter, she'd probably sit there and read romance novels. And slightly pervy. Yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dresden also has a cat called Mister. It's a 30-pound cat house cat. I have had a 27-pound house cat, so I know what that looks like. Oh, that's a big that's cat. That's a massive yeah. cat. And when they bonk you, you almost fall over. So when he describes that, I'm like, oh, Puck. We had one called Puck. Cute. It was super cute. Uh, I, my dog is 65 pounds and she's imagining even half of that in a cat. I just, I kind of can't even. Chonky. Yeah. Just chonk. That sounds like Lots a of chonk. big old kitten. Oh, but I would rub that belly if they'd let me. So you also get to meet uh, Warden Morgan, who is from the White Council of Wizards. He is law enforcement for wizards, specifically tasked with watching Harry, who has the quote unquote doom of Damocles over him. And do they explain why? Is... Oh, they no, they totally do. I'm sorry. I, I had yeah. a moment of like, wait, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and immediately I remembered as soon as I asked. <laughs> Well, so they explain it, but they don't really explain it. So they tell you that he killed a person using magic, which is against the laws of magic, but he did so in defense of himself and other people. Didn't and they so specify that it was his uh, like old master or something? It is his old master, yeah. Justin DeMorn, yeah. Morgan does not like... It's funny that his name is Morgan. Yeah, I keep um, on being but, like, what? What's up? <laughs> what? What's up? <laughs> See, that doesn't happen to me until it's Christmas. Um, <laughs> then I'm like, yep, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, I hear my name everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, Morgan doesn't like Harry uh, for a variety of reasons. So he's basically policing him all the time, trying to catch him doing something bad so that he can impose the doom of Damocles, which means behead him. Dun, dun, dun. Like on the spot. Yeah, he is not into Harry at all. There's no. there's honestly so many more characters beyond what we've kind of already talked about. So many more. Uh, do you have a favorite? Um, other than those, uh, Toot Toot for sure. Toot Toot's, toot -toot's very cute. 
Toot Toot's a, an awesome fairy. Toot Toot becomes more and more and more important as the series goes on. So you meet him briefly in this and he's just being cute and information gathering because fairies are good at information gathering. But, and full of a love yeah. for pizza. And full of a love for pizza. He's very easily motivated. So yeah, you just meet Toot Toot briefly. But like part of the hard thing about this for me specifically is because I love this series so much and because I've read it so many times, it's really hard for me to come out and and extrapolate myself from all the rest of the books and how much I love the rest of the books. Because the way I describe this book to everyone that I, I give it to is like, this was the tryout book and it is by far the worst of the series. And it just gets better and better and better and better and better. The 15th book, which is the, the one that came out last, was actually nominated for a Hugo Award. And imagine being the 15th book in a series and that's the one that gets the award or like gets nominated for the we did not win yeah. <laughs> but it gets it gets nominated for the award on the 15th book you're just like but it actually is true like every single book gets better and advances the story so much yeah i would say if you're going to read this book just like go all in dig in we kind of mentioned that there's a ton of characters and there are there's truly just so gosh darn many characters in this book and to be honest it feels a whole lot like the like the first episode of a, a new tv show series where you're, yeah. you're there's no character development there none it's purely about establishing characters kind of showing a little bit of their relationships and how character a knows character b and and so on and kind of just getting a feel for the the lay of the land yeah. Well, I remember it was written out of bet, right? And he just, he didn't, he was going to toss this book. Yeah. So I don't think he put too much, he wrote it like it was supposed to be like a Jerome writing it essentially. So he, he really just wanted to get into like the story immediately, which as you can imagine is my jam because I like that. Yeah. Although I would have to say like one of my favorite things about these books is that their character development is actually amazing, but it takes a lot of books to get there. Even if I was not familiar with the rest of the story, and to be honest, it's been so long since I've read it that I only have this kind of like vague sense of what happens later, barely. Yep. Even without that, I still feel like I would have thought this was a cute book. It's super fun. It doesn't have to have plot de or uh, character development to be just no, fun. No, no. It's still just a fun, It's it. like I said, it's a noir gumshoe book told by this perspective of a wizard like it's it's absolutely fun it's it's definitely like fluff reading i mean all of the dresden files is is decidedly urban fantasy fluff so like there's nothing that serious but as the series develops you definitely get deeper and deeper into the worlds and you get more and more plot twists that are just like <gasps> what this one is kind of actually nice that it's not so deep into it because you could just see how everyone meets each other and and how uh, generally weird they are at each other right now because they're not they aren't who they will become right yeah. yeah they're just they're they're very they're the the cliche versions of themselves yeah Totally. There's the jock. There's the weird girl. Yeah. There's yeah. the, you know, librarian bookish type. Obviously, this is not set in high school at all, but it's that same kind of level of, ah, yes, here's the like, go get them tough cop. And then here's the ragged wizard character. I mean, if, if ragged wizard is a cliche but harry kind of makes it feel like it should be there's there's a fairy there's a vampire there's a this there's a that it is a little bit of kind of checking off the book i mean to be fair it is it was a tv show that's actually how i got into it to begin with like it was a tv show for like it was a, it was a book series first but then they made it into a tv show and how i encountered it was that it was a tv show first oh interesting so yeah 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 i got there first it's definitely worth watching that tv show there is there are things that are different about it it's a absolutely a 90s television show though so you got to like go in knowing that <laughs> you know but i i really like that tv show interestingly um Wait. in 2018 I'm so <laughs> wait. How is it a '90s TV show if this was written in uh, 2000? Uh, oh yeah, you're right. I mean, I accept your claim. A TV yeah, show can be just, a '90s TV show without yeah. being made in the '90s. No, it's 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 like a '90s TV show. But I think it. I, I think it, it must have been early out. 2000s. Yeah, very early 2000s. But it's definitely like a '90s TV show. Like it's it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer essentially, right? Mm, and was, wasn't so, that also 2000s? No. I don't know. I didn't watch that show. Because I watched that in college and I graduated in 99. Mm, Buffy, came, Buffy, Buffy must have started in 
in like 97. <laughs> I'm, they probably I'm, finished in the 2000s. I'm so bad at trivia games that involve any kind of like knowing dates. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, it, it definitely comes off as a 90s television show. Like when you watch it, it's funny. Um, Interestingly, Fox has optioned it as of October 2018 to make a brand new TV show Ooh. out of it. I would be this I feel like would make such a good show. Mm -hmm. Like uh, 100%. Do, do you think it would be better to do an episode for each book? No, that's too too little. But I feel no. like a season is also way too much for each book. Yeah, I think you'd have to either expand one or shrink down the other for mm -hmm. sure. Maybe like every a book per Although couple episodes. Although TV show seasons are now are like eight to ten episodes. So, you know, if like HBO did it or something, it would definitely be a season. Anyway, back to the plot of this book. What? <laughs> so Dresden gets hired to do all this stuff. He's also investigating this ring of d drug situations uh with the stuff called oh yeah eye. the uh the three eye yeah which allows you to like see with your third eye yeah and you get like the the and actually the third eye is a thing like the it is your magical sight then you can see the world in a different way and they have invented a drug that m makes you able and they don't they talk about how it's made it's made through sex magic but they don't tell you like the details of how it's made so like when we say that this book glosses over stuff like that it definitely does you're just like oh okay and then you just move on um but yeah he's so unsurprisingly all of the trails that he is following end up meeting together and become the same case at some point which is not always the case in the in the dresden files but definitely these first few are if you see a bunch of paths they're all gonna nice. converge for sure which is enormously satisfying after that last book <laughs> like let me just tell you like this is like the solution to the witcher novel for yeah. me <laughs> okay we're getting to the point we've met all the people i understand who they are in the world and we have a beginning a middle and end and they all meet dun, dun, fantastic dun. oh my goodness yeah <laughs> there's, there's something so beautifully fluff and i mean that in the best possible way like i love i love fluff i love it in my books i love it in my shows and my movies i like happy yeah. simple easy entertainment you know yeah although i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily call the dresden uh, happy. i suppose every one of them is him suffering just badly but it's through enjoyable. the entire book like everyone <laughs> he's never happy anytime he gets happiness like there's a point later when when a certain thing that you've been will it or will it not happen for a million years like looks like it's gonna happen and then all hell breaks loose and you're just like cool excellent like you thought he might have a moment of happiness and that is not gonna no, happen for no, sure the, the world is just built for yeah. being difficult for him as a character yeah <laughs> yeah for sure if you could go anywhere in the, the dresden series that that we've seen so far in book one i feel like it's not fair if you use like places from later books but just in this book where would you visit um, I've always wanted to go to McAnally's and have that steak sandwich. And I've always, always wanted to go see Harry's lab in his apartment. Like in my mind, I have, he's never described the layout of his apartment. He's described what kind of rooms are in his apartment. Like that there's a bathroom, a bedroom, and a main area with a kitchen et in it. Yeah, and like that's it. Basement-ish? Yeah, he, he's in a basement and then he has a sub-basement. Mm. Like he has the classical blah 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 a apartment which is the like halfway underground where the windows are at the very top and then he has a sub basement which is his lab but i have a like the clearest picture of what his apartment looks like and how it's dark all the time because you know he doesn't use electricity and like what rugs are where and how his furniture is orientated and stuff like that so that's in my head and so i would really really like to see if that's what it actually looks like and it is decidedly different than what's in the television show interesting like i completely would picture it as a, a bachelor pad like empty pizza boxes and like random socks everywhere oh i don't think so i think i think carrie's a little bit cleaner than that seems like a I think there's books everywhere. Like, I think there's stuff everywhere. Like, there's, like, definitely a lot of knick-knacky tchotchkiness because it breaks up the, the the magical energy also. He talks about that a little bit. Um, he talks about it in regards to Macanelli's, but I think he applies it to his house, too. So I think there's, like, books everywhere and, you know, old-worldy kind of things that you would need. Maybe even, like, not a cauldron, but, like, a pot to cook on on your, on your stove, which is essentially a cauldron. Um <laughs> But like for actual cooking, not for making spells, uh, there is a, I, I believe a cauldron downstairs in his, in his basement, but the, and that the basement has a completely different picture in my head than what his apartment is like decidedly. It looks like every person's garage or workshop in my head. Nice. Yeah. I like it. So 
Yeah, I would really like to see those. How about you? I feel like Macklin Alley's would be pretty sweet just because it, I don't know, I like food places. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I like food. Yeah, you give me food, you give me a beer. That's going to be a pretty dang good place for me. Yeah. Although I, I admit I'm a little bit curious to see Bianca's, the, the vampire. Oh, yeah. Brothel? Yeah. Brothel like that, is the word you're looking for? <laughs> it, I suppose. But it seems like it'd be very fancy. Very uh, fancy. Very fancy. Like vel- just Oh, it's no, it's called the Velvet Room. Yeah. I so think like it's best, best little everywhere. house in Texas fancy. Have I best- am kind of down. I want Have to you see seen it. that? Best little whorehouse in Texas? Mm, no. Is that the one that has... Dolly Parton and yes. Burt Reynolds, I think? Is it Burt Reynolds or the other one? Tom Selleck? No. Heard... Burt Reynolds. It's Burt Reynolds. <laughs> I get this Weirdly enough, I've heard it talked about a lot. I don't think I've ever seen it. Watch it sometime. It's great. It's ridiculous. It's Will amazing. I like it? Will it yeah. be uh, the, the velvet room of Bianca St. Clair? Yeah. And Dolly Nuts. Parton's amazing as a madam. I would definitely have six to eight beers before you start. Anyway, unsurprisingly, getting back to the story, Harry s- solves all the, all the cases. Spoilers. <laughs> this is what we were talking about when we gave you that spoiler warning. They all get solved. They're all related. Everything turns out okay, although all hell breaks loose in the meantime before that goes down. So, yeah, it's like we said, it's very fluff, um, but it's great fluff. Like, it's so good. And it's so – it's funny how it changes, too. Like, the the books go from this really noir – sort of feeling where he's narrating in that like gumshoe detective-y uh, voice yeah. and then it, and then it gets different it changes for sure and even though he's always solving some sort of mystery and and usually some sort of case for murphy murphy by the way is a, a lieutenant of special investigations who works for the police department when they think they got something wiggy that they don't know how to explain. They just give it to her. And her job is to write reports that say that it was something completely normal while she figures out what it actually is. The rest of the department seems to know that that's the case. So it's like they believe in magic, but they don't. Yeah. I mean, it it sounds like she gets a lot of kind of flack for what she does. Like, it's weird that it's a recognized thing that she's being asked to do by her police department but at the same time they also like don't acknowledge it it's a very strange position she seems to be in yeah yeah and she seems to be the only person who's willing to like have the open mind to do the work and like actually figure out and like she doesn't really believe in magic either i think until she sees it because she at some point she sees it and she's like oh huh and even then she kind of doesn't believe it like she's trying to find another explanation she's being a muggle like a muggles will find another explanation yeah that kind of willful like nope, yeah that's not what i saw yep yep there's no way that that's what happened so it must have been a gas leak or a what are those those balloons those weather balloons it must be yes it must have been a weather balloon <laughs> <laughs> like we got a lot of weather balloons floating around yeah her life's just full of them yeah. Oh goodness! So I have a qu- another question for you. This uh, this third eye, third eye drug. Now, assuming it doesn't have the main problem with it in the book, which is that, like, I think it like kind of drives you a little bit insane. Yeah. Would you try it? Let's say it's uh, no lasting effects. One, you know, like evening only. I won't get addicted. You get to see into the third, the third sight. Oh heck yeah! I am a hundred percent down for any drugs that are not addicting. Nice. Like that's that's a personal rule of my life. Like as long as I w- I won't do any drugs that are addicting, but all the other ones I'm in. Follow up question. Okay. Who who would be your um I don't know what the word for this is. The buddy that watches you to make sure you don't run into the street naked. Oh, I need someone who is very pure um because you're going to see their soul or whatever, right? Cuz you're getting magical sight, oh, so you're right. going to see their aura. So you got to yeah. make sure, you know, it's like when you're getting ready to do some acid. You definitely want to make sure that all the things in your life are pretty happy at that moment because you you want to make sure your experience is great. So I would definitely find someone who is uh, as light and fluffy as I could possibly get. Okay, and but you don't know who that light and fluffy person would be in your life. Oh, I have my my bestie Wendy. Probably I would bring Aww. her. She is she is the light and fluffy in my life for sure she's she's a little angel oh i yeah. like it <laughs> i have two besties and one is the angel on my shoulder and the other one is the devil and i can't i can't pick one over the other that's fair you're allowed to have as many besties as you want yeah and they're all the best yeah yes how about you would you do it 
I mean, yeah, I'm, I feel like there's a lot of things that I haven't done because I don't know the way my life has gone, yep. but I am infinitely curious about all of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is, if I, again, had kind of all the guarantees that we already talked about, then yep. yeah. And I would yep. probably have my friend Kirsten watch, which who mm. you've, you've met actually. She came to Costume College. Yeah. Uh, and she was hanging out with me. Didn't we have Korean barbecue over there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You also yeah. hung out with her over here in Seattle. Great. Yeah. But I feel like she would be no nonsense. It would make sure that I didn't get up to trouble. Yeah, that's smart too, for sure. There's a lot of things in my life that I'm really glad that I did in my like early 20s when I was too stupid to know any better and that I wouldn't do now because I'm an adult and I've seen some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah. don't want to have to like experience that part of my life again. So yeah, but I would do this in a heartbeat for sure. Let's see we talked about where you would go and favorites do you do you have a person that you would want to uh have a beer with sit down to tea i would love to interview johnny marconi uh, what would you ask him you said interview that implies questions yeah i would love to like have tea or beer but basically like interrogate the crap out of him i would like to know how crime syndicates really work I would like to know how he got the influence he has. Like, basically, I need to do um, an analytical study of how he got so successful and then try to figure out if I can apply that to my life without it being illegal. I, I want you to write that book. I want you yeah, to write a like... fictional book about interviewing a Bob boss <laughs> and applying those skills. There's stuff that happens in the, late, the later books um, that are, is very interesting about him. Like, he's not just a crime boss in the regular world either. And so... I, I think that's fascinating. And I think that's a certain set of personality traits that I just I, I, I want to know. And I want to know how it feels to be that ruthless. Also, Bob would be really interesting. Although I feel like he'd just be full of weird comments. And I, I feel yeah, like I enjoy his sass viewing it as like a third person reader, a third point of view, whatever. But I feel like in person, I would just like want to throw him across the room like way too yeah, he's quickly. He's in a skull. You can totally do that. Yeah. Like I, I could yeah. and therefore would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But honestly, I think it'd be really cool to sit down and chat with Harry, which I think is unusual for a book. I feel like a lot of books, the main characters are interesting, but not necessarily personable or not. Their lives are interesting and you want to read more about what's happening to them, but you don't actually necessarily want to interact. Harry, I think, would legit be pretty cool if he wouldn't mind telling me about stuff yeah i feel like it'd be yeah. neat to sit down and talk about how magic works i have a theory about about what you just said because i feel that way about almost all television shows and books i read whereas i don't really love the main characters ever buffy the vampire slayer one of my favorite shows of all time i don't give a shit about buffy <laughs> like at all I, she could fall off the planet and I would be like, bye, Buffy. I am so interested in everybody else on that show and how their characters developed and like what they're like. Like those are super interesting mm -hmm. to me. Harry Potter is the same. Like I don't actually care about Harry Potter at all. I care about all the other people around him. I think they're super interesting. So I I very strongly feel that. And I actually feel the same way. Like I feel like Harry is in, in this book, this Harry, Harry Dresden is is amazing. Like he's a really great guy, and I would actually love to talk to him because I feel like he's probably really interesting. Yeah, no, he seems like a a very down to earth kind of guy, considering he's like full of magical abilities and up to shenanigans, solving cases, all that stuff. But he seems like he'd be a cool person to just sit down and chat with. Except that every time that he like in the this is this is for sure in this book, but it's also for sure in almost every book. Every time that he could solve a problem by giving someone else some information. He does not do that. And he kicks himself every single time for being like that. So I wonder if talking to him would be as interesting as you think, because I wonder how much of it he would omit. Like, I would like to talk to him if he was forced with, like, truth serum. Oh, <laughs> that's a bold thing. Like, because I want, I want you to actually ask my questions you know, or answer my questions. Yeah. I feel like you would have to talk to him from a position of, like, equalness to make him t talk yeah. in a in the way that I want I think that sounds really weird but yeah. like I feel like you don't you neither want to be uh, someone who's in a big position of power over him so he has to be kind of defensive and on the guard and what have you but also you don't want to be some random person who doesn't know anything because yeah then right. he's also not going to tell you things because he's not allowed to there's a lot of things that like you know secrets he knows societies he knows about that he doesn't feel at liberty to share information about and so i feel like you want to be someone that's like right on his level but then i guess you wouldn't be asking him questions about how magic works i always find him really interesting because he doesn't seem to like not tell people stuff like if you walked up to him and told asked him a question he might answer it 
And and to people in his life, he answers all kinds of questions. But it seems like when the money is on the table and that question that he refuses to answer is definitely going to be the one that causes all the problems, you know? And you're like, if you just answered every question, dude, this would not be a problem. It's a recurring theme. But that that's just too easy. Can't do it that way. Nope, yeah. nope, nope, nope. So as far as I could tell, the title line never appeared in this I book. I don't think so, yeah. like So they definitely talk about storms. He can see the storm rolling in and he's like, oh no, until he kind of realizes that the, the actual like s- storm front, the, the kind of leading edge of the storm won't reach the dangerous spot for like another hour or so. I yeah, think that's yeah. like the closest it comes. Uh, there's one point at which he's driving and he's out running the storm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that movie 2012 where the guy's like out running earthquakes and stuff? Oh my God. That's a, that's a 16 beer, but yeah. 16 beer. Oh my God. It's awful. It's so bad. But like, if you ever want to see John, I think it's John Cusack driving a limo from, I think it's like North Dakota to California in 15 hours out running earthquakes. That's the one. Nice. (laughs) <laughs> nice it's so Netflix. bad it's so i don't even know i i watched it i got forced to watch it by a bunch of dudes in a theater and they had told me it was only 90 minutes long so i was like i can do this yeah it's not 90 minutes long at all and i just sat like through half of the movie staring at them instead of the movie screen screen because i was so annoyed it's really bad dude <laughs> so was there anything about this book you didn't like i feel like there's something really off like i i I hate to criticize, but at the same time, you kind of, you gotta, gotta what you gotta. There's it's a discussion. You gotta have goods and bads. There's something really weird about the way he talks about women, or or maybe the way he describes them. Yeah. Not necessarily the way that he has them say dialogue. Like, I don't, although th- that's rare enough since he's the mayor character that. I yeah. Know. But there, I don't know. Karen talks a lot. Yeah. And I, I don't think I've had any issues with her scenes that I can think of off the top of my head. But I feel like anytime there's anything even a little bit sexy going on in the scene with a lady, it's just it's just a little weird. I think he was getting his his feet under him, I actually, because like in later in the series, I love the way he writes women, but reading this particular book yeah it's very uh about how they look and how sexualized they are when he's describing them he does not go into anything that's actually important like are they smart are they funny are they any of the other things that would make a woman attractive other than she had the longest and darkest legs and she was wearing a purple skirt that offset her skin and you're just like if you use the word flesh i'm out <laughs> he does use the word nipples that that 100 happened oh he does yeah yeah, yeah. My husband says flesh and I'm like, mm. you don't like flesh? Um, he says things to women like your flesh is cool to the touch. And I'm like, dude, don't fucking do that. It's not OK. No chick is going to be OK with you saying that to them. It's just creepy AF. I'm out. <laughs> I mean, are and you? Yet I married this dude. <laughs> it sounds like you're kind of kind of in. I'm, I'm kind of in. <laughs> I'm I'm actually all in, except I the part of the all in is I get to scream at him for doing anything weird Smash like that. Smash all in. Yeah. Smash it. Smash that like button. Uh my biggest met about this book. Okay, so let me just start with I love James Marsters. I love him from Buffy. I love him in everything he has ever done since, and I love his voice. But this book has mouth sounds like you would not believe, and I am allergic to mouth sounds. They make me absolutely crazy. Like I don't like I can't sit in a quiet room with people while they eat if they're a loud eater. Like my husband is the world's loudest eater and I have to literally turn on a television <laughs> and it's actually a like a, a known phobia thing. That so, is fascinating. Like I, I totally remember seeing a review of this book. It's had like the most scathing review of, <laughs> of the, mouth like, sounds. the mouth sounds, which is yeah. funny because I was even kind of on the hunt for it or like a- aware of it as a thing. Mm-hmm. And I completely you couldn't did hear not, it. Oh, no, God. you could hear it weird because like, I I also don't like eating noises. They're my least favorite thing. You could hear his like mouth opening and like him. You could hear him licking his lips and like it was crazy. It doesn't happen later in the series. Like if you're going to listen to this audiobook all the way through, you know, all 15 audiobooks or whatever it is, it definitely stops. I think it's it's for maybe three, three or four books. It You can hear his mouth sounds like every time he opens his mouth, you can hear his lips separate. And I'm like, ah, it makes me crazy. I, I definitely didn't notice that he has a lot of like dramatic sighs, pauses, breath noises, kind mm-hmm. of like, <sighs> Yeah, and then he like reads the sentence, but it it feels so Harry Dresden. I don't yeah, know, like yeah. it. It works for me. Mm-hmm. So 
I don't know. There, there's definitely something about his voice that even though it's been a long time since I've listened to these books, upon hearing <laughs> him, yeah. him, James, read the book, I was like, oh, this is the voice. This is the voice of Harry Dresden. Absolutely. 100%. There was a guy who did the television show. Um, I forgot what was his name. Blackthorn. What's his name? I wrote it down. Paul Blackthorn is was the face of Harry in the TV mm-hmm. show. And I can't get that face out of my head. Like, that's who he looks like to me. I think I actually did see this show, although it would have been after I had read the books. And I remember thinking that it was okay. I have a picture in my head who's, I'm assuming, is this is Paul, Paul Blackthorn. And he's more, I don't know, more middle-aged, I guess, than I picture for Harry. Sure. Which is weird because Harry probably is like approaching middle age. Harry's 75 at the time of this first book, I think. 75? Wizards live to be 300 years old or whatever. So yeah, he's actually way older Did than you think he is. they say that in the book? Later. Not in this no, book. No, in this book. Way, way, no, not in this book. But I know this because I'm that girl and I've done this research. He's actually like, I did I did the math. Uh, Well, actually, he could be as little as like 55 in this book. Weird. Because he's, he's 75 in another book. He he vaguely mentioned my that. mental picture is like late twenties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be because that for a seventy five or fifty five year old wizard would look like an eight, a late twenties human for sure. Anyways, <laughs> getting a little extra knowledge here. Um, okay, so wrapping kind of up. Um, do you have a rating for this book? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it four and a half oh. scorpions. Yeah, I would give it a well. Okay, I'm gonna give the book like a, this first book by itself. Like if you're gonna read this and nothing else, I would give it like a four point two seven five or something like that. But yeah, so, solidly high. Um, I I loved reading the yeah. book the first time, not even knowing that there was more. If you want to go for the whole series, like I'm way higher than that. I'm like a four point eight. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, and I feel like, yes, I might totally be biased because of the fact that I am familiar with the series and whatever, I, but I don't care. I, I just yeah, don't. Yeah. I like it. Obvious question, because we're doing it now, worth a reread? Yes. Although apparently I had to wait, like, what, 15 years before my, my reread? Yeah. I mean, I reread it every year, so. Would you recommend this to a friend? Yeah, I would say, gosh, if I mean, if you like sci-fi fantasy stuff at all i feel like you would enjoy this it's got fairies and werewolves and vampires and oh my just magic and everything like it's really really fun i like it yeah i i always i recommend this to everybody basically i'm like no this is a great book i do warn them that of all the books in the series this is there's actually one other book that i don't i actually like less than this and this is that's the second book i actually like that one well no maybe not there's there's also one about a horror convention that I'm also like meh about, but it introduces a really great character. So I would say any book that you read of Harry Dresden's is going to be better than the last one for sure. And they just keep getting better. So yeah, I definitely think I would recommend it to a friend. If there were other books in this series, would you want to read them? <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> also pretty an obvious, obvious question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're really good at answering these before we ever get to the, yeah, the end yeah. here. But yeah, no, I would 100% read on. And I feel like this this is a book where it's super worth it. Absolutely worth it to keep reading on. Yeah, agree. All right, are you ready for speed round? Speed round me up. Okay. If this book were a perfume, what sense would it contain? Uh, Dragon's Blood. What? <laughs> dragon's blood. There's no dragons in this. Oh, okay. I don't care. I've never smelled dragon's blood. Okay. It is absolutely perfume. What scents are in that? That's what I'm asking. Like, I don't know. Okay. Dragon's blood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm thinking like cedar and oak and, you know, the base scents. Was it, was, is, nope. it dark, is it dark and musky? Is it light and fluffy? Is it airy? Is it floral? It's, it's like musky but sweet. Okay. Fair There's enough. definitely a hint of sweetness there. All right. I don't know. Like, it's it's something that my mom, every time she found it in, like, a pagan shop, would get it for me. Okay. Because she was convinced I'd like it. Do you like it? I do now. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I love dark scents, so yeah. All right. If this book were set in a non-American city in the world, where would you like it to see it changed to? Oh. I mean, London would be kind of cool. Yeah. Because you would have all the, like old sites yep. but i also feel like venice oh would be so cool yeah. yeah i can't i'm not sure which i like better mentally i went to prague and then completely the opposite direction i went to shanghai nice yeah 
Yeah, I feel like this would work so good at pretty much any major city in the world. Yeah. It'd be so If awesome. I didn't exclude non-American, I was like, she's going to go to New York because that's like the obvious. There's lots of mob bosses there. <laughs> I would want to be in Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, you know that. Give me some Seattle mob bosses. There's a whole bunch of urban fantasy that's set in Seattle. Do you read those? I read like a Neil Stevenson uh-huh. book, but that's about oh, it. I'll give you some tips yeah. later. Okay. <laughs> okay. If this was going to be made into a movie, who would you pick to play Dresden? I'm so terrible at actors, so this is going to be very tough. Ooh, what's that one who played Deadpool? Oh, Ryan. One of the Ryans. Yeah, one of the Ryans. One of the Ryans. No, because one of the Ryans sucks. Like that guy from Drive, I don't like him. Gosling. I'm not into Gosling. Yeah. She's is give, that not the one? She's, no, that's Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Mm, Ryan Gosling yes, yes, yes. is the guy from like Blade Runner, and I don't like him. His his entire fortune in the world was made by looking out a window. Like watch any Ross, Ryan Gosling movie, and he looks out the window. It's like how Kevin Bacon, <laughs> Kevin Bacon digs. Like in every movie he's in, you'll see De- Kevin Bacon somehow with a shovel m- digging a hole. Ryan Gosling stares out the window. I don't like that guy. Ooh, ooh, or Chris Pratt. Oh my gosh, Chris Pratt. Not for digging for yeah, okay. for this role. <laughs> oh, I think he's too silly. But I don't. Dresden's I feel like Dresden silly. has like a little bit of silly, and also I wouldn't mind seeing him try to play a little bit more of a serious role. If you could change anything about this book, what would it be? Oh, it'd be kind of interesting if this whole series had Dresden as a female. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel like that'd be an interesting take. Would you gender swap everyone or just him? I'd go either way. Okay, I don't know. Like it'd be interesting to see. Uh, three words to describe this book. Ooh, magic. It's got to be got to be the first one. S- sorcery? Nope. That's, that's, that's still cheating. magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I wanted to say urban fantasy, but that's that's terrible. Drugs. Ooh, drugs. I think I, I appreciate your contribution, madame, yeah. and I accept it. It is one of my three words now. Okay. Magic, drugs. Let's go with uh, an investigate or investigation. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. Which, and I honestly, I feel like that kind of works for all the books. Yeah. At least the first and last one. I don't know if drugs applies to every book in the series. No, no, almost never. No, not there's so almost much. never drugs in these books. Actually, monsters would probably be good. Magic monsters, and um, yeah, I already forgot the last one because I'm the worst. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, investigation. <laughs> investigation, yes. I feel like magic monsters investigation would apply for pretty much every book. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. What are we reading next, Morgan? Oh, we are reading The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. That book looked really good, and I don't even love high fantasy, but that book looked pretty bomb. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I, I love me some good dragons. I'm just, I'm a fan. Yeah. Maybe it's all that dragon's blood growing yeah, up. Yeah, maybe. Is your wait? Is your mom pagan? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm like, where did she? How did? Okay. My my mom would be like a what bookstore? <laughs> All right, everybody. It's time to give you guys some homework. Uh, the first thing I would love you to do is rate this book on your purchase platform if you have read it, because I feel like it's really good for the authors and it helps them out. Also, rate this podcast on your purchase platform. It's not purchased. It's completely free because it's a podcast. And lastly, <laughs> follow us on Instagram at Ladies Who Genre, all one word. Bow, 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 bow. Exit so Bye, guys. Bye. A tale we've both